Hi guys, in this quick tip tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the prismatic overlays and if you open your set of prismatic overlays they open just like this and you have 40 overlays that you can use. They have a variation between prisms and rainbow flares and crystal gems and then just solid colors. So let's go ahead and look at how to use these on a photo. So when you download your overlays, they're going to come in a compressed folder. Most newer computers allow you to double click this. It's going to open and show you the prismatic overlays in a folder. You want to click this and drag this and release this to your desktop. It's going to unzip those files for you. Now if you try to work from this folder here, which is zipped, and you double click and you open this, it rarely works. There are some computers that may allow you to do this, but your best bet is to take this folder and click and drag onto your desktop or somewhere else onto your computer. That will automatically unzip those files. If for some reason your computer does not unzip those files, you can use a free trial from WinZip or 7-Zip or any other file compression software companies. Just look and see if they have a free trial and use that to unzip your files. Now there are multiple ways to add your overlays in Photoshop. If you have your folder open over top of Photoshop, all you have to do is click and drag, wait for that plus symbol to appear, and then release with your mouse, and that's going to load in the Photoshop. Then you just simply click the check mark or choose enter. Now the other method is just as easy. Go to file and choose place embedded or place linked. I have a separate video in my YouTube channel that explains the difference in these two if you're interested. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose placed embedded and this is going to open my folder. Now if you've not already selected your folder, all you need to do is locate that on your desktop or in your external hard drive. When you find an overlay that you like, just simply click. You can double click this or just choose place and that's going to load the same exact way, choosing your check mark or pressing enter. Okay, I'm just going to show you really quickly a couple ways you can use these. Because this is a smart object, when you bring this into Photoshop, you can resize these as large or small as you want without damaging the pixels. There's a video on my YouTube channel that is called um, Smart Objects versus Rasterized Layers. Check that out if you're not familiar with the terms. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this right about there choose enter and then we're going to drop down and choose our screen mode and you'll see that it goes and does a transparent through that black on that image. So you'll notice that there are some hard edges so what I want to do to correct that is just grab a masking layer, grab a black paintbrush and I'm just going to paint around the edges to remove anything that I don't want visible on that screen. So let's go ahead and look at our other overlay here. Now everybody that uses the prismatic overlays uses them a little bit different. I personally have the preference of making a very large glowing edge or a rainbow prism across my images. Other people like to choose these smaller elements within the image and add them over top of wings or just a little sparkle in the background. So I've blown this image up. I'm going to drop down and choose screen mode and you'll see that it just sort of wraps around the entire image. Now, if you love your image just like this, then that is absolutely fine. However, sometimes you'll run into elements like this yellow spot here or this little prism that goes over top the face and it almost distracts from the image. Now, there are a couple of ways to take care of these distracting elements. You can always create your masking layer, grab a black paintbrush and just paint those off. However, what you're going to notice is that there's a difference in the tonal range now of the image. You'll see that where the masking layer is, all of that nice contrast comes through, whereas on the overlay where the prism is, it kind of tones down that contrast. So there's a noticeable difference there. If you don't like that, go ahead and undo, remove that masking layer, and then you're going to grab your lasso tool select your feather and place that at about 125 pixels. Your pixel range will be determined based on how much you want your edges feathered. Now my preferred method for blending overlays in together, I'm going to choose my lasso tool. Make sure my feather is set very high. I want this feather to be enough that I don't see any noticeable lines in the difference of the background and the overlay. So at 125 pixels, I'm going to go down. I'm going to make sure I select that yellow, go down a little bit on the chest and right along the forehead. I'm not going to go much higher than that because if I do, it's going to start feathering this section up here and I don't want that to happen. 
Now I simply want to go up to filter blur and choose average. Now I know this is not how you usually will use the blur tool. When you choose the average it will pick the average color of the selected area you have picked. So for example it's going to select the average of this entire circle that we already have selected. So let's go up to blur and choose average. Now if you look over here in your layer panel on the image it's going to show the average color that was selected and in this case it's a deep dark purple. I can click on and off of this eye icon and that's going to show you with and without that average blur. And you'll notice that it keeps that sort of muted creamy look over top of the entire image versus when you use the masking layer and it took away all of those color tones. Now if you feel like this is still too strong go ahead grab a masking layer turn your opacity down on that black round paintbrush which is a soft round to about 12 percent and we're just going to brush off of the face just a little bit. You can brush off of anywhere of your image but I mostly only target the face and the body. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of the other overlays that come in this set. Now let's go ahead and look at a couple of the more solid overlays. So we're going to go to place embed it and let's look at, let's look at 30. I'm going to simply click and drag to cover the entire image. Choose enter and we're going to drop down and choose screen mode. Now this is very strong so what you're going to do is just bring that opacity down to let's say 50%. You can even do this at 30%. Now some of these overlays with the prismatic give it a more muted effect and I really love how this makes the image look and it just pulls in a lot of really deep rich purple tones. It has a little bit of yellow over here in the corner. Let's go ahead and look at another one. So let's go to file placed embedded again. Let's look at this one here. A lot more color to it. Choose enter. Choose screen mode again. And we'll just lower that opacity back down. So you'll see it brings in a lot of more pastel colors, but there are some occasions where you can change these to say soft light mode. And you'll see it brings in a lot of color around the scene. Same thing, grab your masking layer and just sort of remove any color or tone that you want off of the image. Make sure it's up to about 65%. So there's so many ways that you can use these overlays if you like them on screen mode, if you like them on soft light mode. But let's go ahead and we'll look at one more set. So we're going to choose File, Placed Embedded. And let's pick some of the smaller prisms. Let's choose this one here. I'm going to make this smaller, choose enter and change this to a screen mode and you'll see it almost looks like it's coming right out of those wings so let's create a masking layer we're just going to mask this off a little bit clean up any edges that are hard. Let's add a couple more so we'll go to file placed embed it let's add let's add this one here this one has lots of tiny flickers and flecks in it. I really love this one. Let's choose screen mode. And we can go up to image adjustments and levels. Let's bring our whites into the output, our white outputs levels into the black. We're going to bring our midtones down and our highlights up. And it's really going to make those stand out just a little bit more. You can also lower your opacity if that's a little bit too strong. Let's add another one. So let's go file, placed, embed it. And let's see here. Let's look at this one here. And we'll go to screen mode. So these really change the way your images can look. You can add embellishments and enhancements throughout your entire image. I love the way these look on reflections in glass. I like the way they look in windows, um, on any kind of overlay for wings. They really add a touch of magic to your images. So if you have any questions on how to use these or any suggestions, please feel free to email me. I am happy to take a look at it. Thanks and have a great day.